Hi everyone. Today in this video let us discuss one of the drug methimazole. What is this drug methimazole? Methimazole is classified as thioamide. This drug acts as anti-thyroid agent. Therefore, methimazole can be used in the treatment of hyperthyroidism where it can control the development of Graves' disease and toxic multinodular goiter. All these can be controlled by methimazole which acts as anti-thyroid agent. And this drug can also be used as adjuvant to control the symptoms associated with hyperthyroidism where hyperthyroidism is associated with many of the symptoms such as increased heat sensitivity, increased anxiety, increase in the heart rate, resulting in palpitations and even tachycardia. And unexpected muscle weakness can be observed in the patients with hyperthyroidism. Apart from these symptoms, the patient may also observe few of the other symptoms such as insomnia, lack of sleep, brittle hair, unexpected fatigue, weakness can be observed and loss of appetite is also associated with hyperthyroidism. So all these symptoms can be controlled by methimazole. So today in this video we are going to see how this drug acts, what is its chemical nature, what are the important precautions, side effects, doses, all these things we will discuss in this video. So let us start with the chemical nature of this drug. This is the simple structure of methimazole. Simply here we can observe the imidazole nucleus. Let us give the numbering. This is 1, 2, 3. So methimazole is a imidazole 2 thione derivative. We can write this as 1H imidazole 2 thione. At the third position it is saying the methyl group. So 3 methyl. That is a simple drug methimazole. Now let us see the precautions of this drug. One of the important precautions of methimazole is that this drug can produce a fatal condition agranulocytosis. Due to the development of agranulocytosis, methimazole can produce neutropenia as well as leukopenia. So when the patients are prescribed with methimazole, few of the symptoms can be observed in the patients which should be carefully monitored because they indicate the development of agranulocytosis. For instance, the patient may develop fever along with chills, development of sore throat and leukopenia, decreased leukocyte count and aplastic anemia resulting in the loss of blood cells. All these conditions are associated with use of methimazole. That's why this drug should be carefully given in those patients with any increased risk of agranulocytosis. And particularly the history of the patient should be considered before prescribing methimazole. And in those patients with any previous history of agranulocytosis or exfoliative dermatitis, aplastic anemia and severe hepatitis, in all these conditions this drug should not be given because they further increase fatal agranulocytosis and other systemic complications. So this is one of the important precautions that should be considered before prescribing methimazole, even during the treatment, any development of agranulocytosis should be thoroughly checked in order to reduce systemic complications. And the important precaution of this drug is that this methimazole produces fetal harmless, so it should be carefully given in the pregnant woman. This effect is more pronounced in the first trimester of pregnancy where the organs are going to be developed. So methimazole can reduce the organ development. That's why within first trimester, methimazole should not be used or those patients who are using the methimazole if they are pregnant while using this drug caution should be taken and alternative drug should be prescribed in order to avoid any malformations in the fetus. Use of methimazole in the first trimester may produce craniofacial malformations resulting in the facial dysmorphism and even it can produce gastrointestinal malformations resulting in the incomplete development of organs. That's why methimazole is strictly contraindicated in the pregnant woman, particularly in the first trimester of pregnancy. Similarly, this drug can cross the placental barrier, so it can also produce few of the effects on the fetus, resulting in development of fetal goiter and cretinism. That's why during the pregnancy, this drug is less preferred due to the development of thyroid abnormalities within the fetus. 
another precaution of methimazole is that this drug can produce some hepatotoxicity. Actually, the risk of hepatotoxicity is less pronounced in case of methimazole. Within the thioamides, propyl thiouracil is the another drug which is again used as anti-thyroid agent. The propyl thiouracil is having a more risk for development of hepatotoxicity, where methimazole is less pronounced to produce hepatotoxicity. But still, care should be taken to check any development of hepatotoxicity with long-term use of methimazole and any development of symptoms in the patients such as loss of appetite, unexpected fatigue, diarrhea and jaundice. In case of development of these symptoms, liver functionality test should be done in order to check any development of hepatotoxicity. But as we have discussed earlier, methimazole is having less effect on development of hepatotoxicity compared with propyl thiouracil. Since this drug acts as anti-thyroid agent with high dose and long term use of this drug, it can develop the quite opposite effect. So, methimazole may produce hypothyroidism in the patients. That's why the levels of T4 as well as TSH should be thoroughly checked on long term use. When the TSH levels are elevated, it indicates hypothyroidism along with reduction of T4 levels. So, in case of severe development of hypothyroidism, the use of this drug should be stopped and if required, thyroid supplement should be given in order to reduce hypothyroidism. Now, let us see how this drug acts. Within the thyroid follicles, the systemic circulation can supply the iodide molecules. These iodide molecules can enter into the thyroid follicular cells. Within these cells, they are going to be converted into iodine molecules by peroxidase enzyme activity. Now from this iodine, again the iodide molecules are released by one of the enzyme, thyroperoxidase enzyme. This thyroperoxidase enzyme is having the multiple enzymatic activity. It can convert the iodine molecules to iodide molecules. In this way, the levels of iodide are going to be increased within the globules. And then they can target the thyroglobulin, which is expressed with tyrosine residues. Now, by the action of thyroperoxidase enzyme, these tyrosine residues can be iodinated. So, this iodination is carried by thyroperoxidase enzyme. In this way, we can have two types of iodinated tyrosine residues. So, it can produce diiodination of tyrosine residues resulting in DIT, diiodinated tyrosine residue. Otherwise, it can produce monoiodination resulting in MIT, monoiodinated tyrosine residues. These two residues can be condensed to form the thyroid hormones. If two molecules of DIT are going to be condensed, they can form T4. Otherwise, if one molecule of DIT and one molecule of MIT are condensed, they can form the T3. In this way, within the thyroglobulin, T3 and T4 are going to be formed and they are going to be released by proteolysis. In this way, thyroid hormones are synthesized where thyroperoxidase is one of the key enzyme in the synthesis of thyroid hormones. Now, methimazole is an anti-thyroid agent. It can block the activity of thyroperoxidase enzyme so that it can reduce the formation of T3 as well as T4 hormones. In this way, methimazole can control the symptoms associated with hyperthyroidism. Now, let us see the side effects of this drug. Methimazole can produce nausea, skin rashes, loss of taste, loss of sensation can be observed with this drug. It can also produce some myalgia, muscle pain, development of drowsiness, lightheadedness can be observed with this drug and it can also produce some headache abdominal pain, epigastric distress can be observed with this use of methimazole. Even it can produce arthralgia, joint pain. Other side effects like fatigue, pruritus and sinusitis can be observed with this methimazole. How it is given? This drug is available as a tablet at a strength of 5 mg. The initial dose for the treatment of mild hyperthyroidism is at a rate of 5 mg given thrice daily. So, total daily dose is 15 mg in case of mild hyperthyroidism. In those patients with moderate hyperthyroidism, the dose is further increased to 30 to 40 mg per day given as divided doses three times daily.
so it can be given as 10 mg thrice daily in order to control moderate hyperthyroidism. In those patients with severe hyperthyroidism, the dose is further increased to 60 mg per day given again as 3 divided doses. So it can be given as 20 mg thrice daily to control severe hyperthyroidism. But at this high dose, it can develop hypothyroidism, otherwise it can increase the risk of a granulocytosis where care should be taken to check the development of leukopenia as well as neutropenia within the patients. So that's all about this drug methimazole which is a thioamide and used as anti-thyroid agent. This drug can be used to control the symptoms in hyperthyroidism. So it can be used to manage Graves disease, toxic multinodular goiter and it can also be used as adjuvant in the radioiodine therapy to control the symptoms associated with hyperthyroidism. But the development of egg granulocytosis is one of the important precautions that should be considered with use of methimazole. And this drug is not preferred in the pregnant woman as it can produce fetal damage and reduce the organogenesis resulting in fetal malformations. And it can also increase the fetal goiter and cretinism. That's why in the pregnant woman this drug is not indicated. This drug can be given at an initial dose of 5 mg given thrice daily. But the dose can be escalated based on the severity of the condition. The maximum dose is 60 mg per day given as 3 divided doses. So that's all about this drug methimazole. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.